Welcome back. Our next guest is Thomas Wallner from Liquid Cinema, and I'm not going to lie, I saw something really cool at your booth, and I just want to start off with that. Can we, uh, can we get that tape cued for the transitions video? Uh, while they're doing that, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Give us some background sure, on that feature? Absolutely, yeah. So will I be able to see it? And then you I will be able to see it okay. in a second, but if you want to get started talking sure. about it. If you get it. to see it, it's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> we um, like to make things easy. Well, what you're going to see represents um, the ability of this interactive 360 video platform to actually combine traditional film and 360 seamlessly in one timeline. And that's really because I think of, of this medium as a language that isn't solely restricted to just showing 360. So let's have a look at that. That's actually a story uh, about, about the north and climate change. Now watch this, we're going through the window mm. seamlessly into a 360 on one timeline. That, that is so cool. And that is so cool. And this authoring tool actually makes it really easy to author uh, those kind of transitions. Yeah. And so how do you see this sort of being published, being used in yes. the industry? Well, you know, right now we're, we're business to business, so our clients are large broadcasters, like a lot of the German public broadcasters have licensed mm -hmm. this platform. Uh, but what we're looking into now is finding a way to roll it out to the creatives, you know, the, the people that we ultimately built this for. Uh, in a way that's affordable. So while I don't want to say anything concretely just yet, but there will be some stuff coming up later this year. Very cool. So for people who aren't familiar with Liquid Cinema, I talk about it all the time um, when we are talking about VR because it's, it's such a crucial tool as far as um, attention. Talk about what motivated you as a storyteller, your background is as a storyteller, in order to create this software and what it does for people who aren't familiar. Yeah, uh, so about four years ago, we did this sprawling giant project called the Polar Sea. And some of those scenes were from the Polar Sea, where I was tasked to make an immersive film in the Arctic. And in those days, everything was like a completely uncharted territory, from the shooting to the, how would you cut and stitch this? And then ultimately, how would you tell a story with this? And then, you know, coming from a traditional film background, you know about the power of traditional film. You know, traditional film is incredibly powerful. And what I saw is that this medium is very immersive, but not so powerful uh, in terms of being able to tell a story. It is powerful to tell stories in it, but they are different, and there's some formidable hurdles. For instance, you don't have a frame. And that really bothered me, that, you know, between cuts when you come into a new scene, that it could be quite random of, of you know, where the viewer is looking, and as a director, you're aghast. That's like having a drunken camera person. <laughs> That's a great analogy, a drunken it's camera, like, you're absolutely right. It's like That's a drunken it's, camera it's person, right? And, and so scared. we wanted to find a method that would preserve, absolutely preserve the freedom of a viewer to look anywhere they wanted, but we used the cut into a shot to programmatically move the sphere to show them in the new shot to come in at the point that the director or the editor wanted them to see. And so I'd like to say, and I think this is literally true, that we've brought the frame back into this medium. Mm -hmm. We call it forced perspective, call it whatever you want, but we brought the frame back. And I think it's a fundamental change that will change how this medium gets used in story. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have things where we actually have matching action cuts now that were just not possible to do before. And, you know, that means storytellers can actually concentrate on what's in the story rather than thinking, oh, I'll have a person walking through the frame to guide you to this scene. Right. You're spending People more... People looking in the scene at, yeah, the, at exactly. the, where they're looking, so they'll you look know, in that way. Building elaborate sound, which I think they still should do. You know, all of this will work in concert together. But then you don't have to worry about this anymore. You just show your scene and you get to it and, yeah. you know, it takes care of that. So let's talk about um, CGs and um, lower thirds because the old school way to do it is to bake them in all the way around the sphere on yes. a cube face. Yes. Which obviously it looks um, janky, for be lack of a better word. If you know you look around, you're seeing that you've got you know yes. the lower thirds around them. But you solved for that. Yes. Tell people how you right. did that. And, and burning it in has a couple of major drawbacks. One is it's in the film, so if you make a mistake, it's really laborious to change it. The second is this is a spherical medium that reacts to the gaze of the viewer. So the standard practice of burning it in four places, hoping somebody you know, will pick up one of these four, I think is a very bad practice. So what we have is we, we actually live render the graphical layer on top of the video at the time of playback, and it's gaze-based. Mm -hmm. So it means if a viewer is looking at a certain character, then the graphic is shown. Mm -hmm. If they're too late in looking, it might not even be shown. It's a very intelligent system. And because it's metadata driven, it also means that you can publish 
in 11, 12 different languages. It's the same video, but you'll have graphical overlays in 12 different languages. And the authoring tool of Liquid Cinema is now has a completely multilingual workflow. Hmm. So you can juggle wow. three videos at the same time in three languages while authoring the graphical layer for 11 different languages. And you can customize it in like minutes for each platform, how these graphics works. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have that, you'd need 21 versions of the same film. Mm -hmm. So it really solves a huge problem. So it basically, it creates a better experience for the viewer, and it creates a better experience for somebody wanting to distribute this their work basically across languages mm -hmm. and territories. So I think we solved a whole bunch of things at the same and time. And I mean, I think that we have probably a thousand more questions. I know I have a bunch. Unfortunately, we are out of time. <laughs> I wish we had more time, but I do encourage you, everyone, to go to Thomas's booth if you're here and ask him questions because it is really amazing to watch what they have there. Just mm -hmm. so, so cool. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us.